Stacy Roan from the Boys and Girls Clubs of America is here as well, Eastern Panhandle specifically. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. How are you today? Great. Great to see you. It's been a little while. It has been a little while, but excited to celebrate Charlotte today. And um, and she's she's just the most perfect person to honor as a Stephanie Pearson champion for youth. Good morning, Charlotte. I'm sorry that we're not here together. I know. I know. Well, you know, Charlotte, it's understandable. Uh, you sent me pictures of your grandchildren, and the first thing I did was I texted Bill, and I said, oh, my goodness, <laughs> those kids are adorable. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that uh, Onita, who I knew when she was, like, a single digits, <laughs> yes. Yes. now has kids. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I've got one sitting here cooing next to me and, and one watching Coco Melon. So if you hear coos and and singing in the background i apologize in advance <laughs> well that's awesome good for you I, I would spend the day with my grandchildren too given the choice i don't have any at the moment but someday if that happens uh <laughs> stacy let's talk about the stephanie pearson award how it started and the qualifications to win this award absolutely so in 2009 the first honoree vicky bullet was named and the the event started out of a i think it was more or less a conversation between our previous director stephanie pearson and kevin mayor kevin knowles and it was a way that we could have a the the i, I believe boys and girls club really didn't have a signature event at that time and they said you know we work with children, we should honor people who make a significant difference in the lives of young people. And through the years, we've we've honored um, a myriad of people from starting in 2009 with Vicki and um, down to last year with Michael Nall. And, and so excited that Charlotte's the honoree. We've worked in partnership with Charlotte for so many years and you know, what a nice fit. It just, it's like, putting on that that those comfortable clothes and saying you know these this is she's my people mm -hmm. so i'm i'm so excited that charlotte's the honoree this year charlotte Aww. congratulations Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> charlotte let's talk about it and tell, me, tell us about your service and your your volunteerism and the work that you do well my goodness um i just have have this uh desire to to do whatever i can to particularly when it comes to children to help and um, I've had a long history because of uh, my church, which is Stephanie Baptist Church, and our close proximity to Burke Street School. We've always, as part of our ministry, tried to support the school. But uh, about a decade or so ago, there were a lot of different individuals in the community that were concerned about education. And we looked at a lot of different schools, and we said, let's just start somewhere. And, of course, I was the biggest advocate for, for Burke Street School. And I, I have to, um, I had told Stacy, I'm just so honored because one of the people that was part of that process with me was, was, uh, was Stephanie. Um, but I go back a long way. Some, some of you might know that I came to this community as a Girl Scout professional in 1990. They plucked this little girl from Kansas, and I came all the way to West Virginia. I had no idea where I was going, and I worked here for about two years for the Girl Scout Council, uh, covering about 19 different um, communities across Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, and Virginia. So I did a lot of traveling, um, but I, I loved working for the Girl Scouts, and I ultimately went to work for them right outside Chicago. But in the meantime, I met this guy named Bill Norris, <laughs> and ultimately I moved back to West Virginia. <laughs> and so um, this is now certainly my home. We will have been married 28 years in May, and um, I just love particularly being from the South Berkeley community, it is so family-oriented. Everyone knows everyone. Of course, everyone knows Bill. And I just um, have a great love for this community, but particularly for Burke Street School. And so over the years, I've developed a relationship with them. I love uh, Todd, the principal. Um, in two weeks, we'll be doing breakfast for, for the uh, staff in um, Teacher Appreciation Week, but we support all the staff at the school. And then um, at the end of May, we have started doing the year-end program in our sanctuary at our church. Uh-oh, I got I got to grab baby girl. It's okay. <laughs> all part of the duties. <laughs> but either way, um, I've always felt that. Oh, oh, okay. We got you. We got 
she just wanted to make her her first appearance on the radio. Yeah, she did great. They following her a little following round of granddaddy's stuff. footsteps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Extravaganza. That'll be grand, grandbaby extravaganza. I yeah. thought Michael Height was on the radio. You <laughs> <laughs> sound like Height. Yeah. Um, uh, you have to wait till tomorrow morning for Height, by the way. Yeah. So, so I've had a long, a long history over, over my career and through my personal um, and ministry at our church of, of uh, doing things to support children. And as I mentioned, um, right when we started working on... Um, our focus on Burke Street School. I had an opportunity to, to go with Stephanie and a team to New York to learn about the Promise Neighborhood concept. And she was right along my side when we came back and met with the teachers. And that's where it all started. We met with the teachers at Burke Street and asked them, what is it that you need? And we just started doing things to support. And Stephanie was right there making sure that any programs that they could provide from the Boys and Girls Club were available to the students there at Burke Street. So I just, you know, it's just, you know, something that is near and dear to me to, to support our youth. And, again, um, I had worked for many years with Dr. Taylor Perry. Many of you know him as, as the premier educator in this community. And he mentored me, and we worked with an advanced placement um, project to get more students of color and low-income students to take advanced placement courses. And through that, I realized, you know, we have to start much earlier, working with families, working with that zero to three, and we started a play group at Burke Street School to support those, those parents. And so, you know, it's, it's really key that, that we spend more time and more attention on the, the youngest of our community. Well, I think Dr. Perry passed away, I think, in 2021. Uh, no, it was quite a loss, quite a loss. And he was just a great guy. I've had many interactions with him, and he was always just such a gentle giant. Absolutely. You know, just a wonderful just, person. I have, to, I have to share this. I was at an a, a, a event on Saturday, and I was in the buffet line, and a little girl, well, she's not a little girl, she's grown now, passed me. She says, Mrs. Norris, do you remember me? And then she told me a name because, of course, I didn't remember her right off. But she was one of the students we had in um, our West Virginia Achievement uh, Academy at North Middle School. And now she's getting ready to, she's gotten her degree, and she's going to Florida to uh, study dolphins. And I said, Dr. Perry would just be so proud, so proud, you know, to, to see how well many of the students that we worked with for those years. Um, we had students from South Middle School, North Middle School, Eagle School, and Orchard View that we worked with over probably about a five your period and so it just it just did my heart well to to have her uh, tap me and to let me know how she was doing when's the uh, dinner again stacy and how do you get tickets the dinner is on may the 18th and it will be at the holiday inn the last couple years throughout covid we we held an outdoor event at at um war memorial park but um that was a little bit nerve wracking because you never knew what the weather was going to do. Mm -hmm. So we uh, so we've moved it back into the Holiday Inn, and um, the dinner is from six until eight thirty, and you'll get a chance while you're there. Um, and we're celebrating Charlotte. We'll also have our young people there to help celebrate her too. Uh, there's a we have a ukulele club in Morgan County who's been practicing tirelessly and. Um, yours truly gets to play with them. Nice. So <laughs> that may or may not be incentive for you to come, but um, but we are having a great time, and um, and we have a couple of our young people who are going to guest co-host the event, and Mayor Knowles will be on hand to deliver a proclamation. Does he know that, by the way? Because I've come to learn from Kevin that a lot of times when he's supposed to be someplace, he doesn't actually know it till the day. He does know he it. He knows in advance. He okay. does know it. We're working on the proclamation right now. And um, and just such a great opportunity to celebrate Charlotte. Um, Charlotte was talking about a lot of the work at Burke Street Elementary and some of the other schools um, throughout the Achievement um, Program or project. And we are, we're applying for 21st Century Community Learning Center funding. And that was something that Stephanie um, had worked on in her early career so that we could make sure that we had a program in the schools where we were helping to support academics. And Burke Street's probably my, I'm not going to call favorites, but I, I really, <laughs> but I enjoy that program because that's the only one where the social worker or the guidance counselor in that school is part of the team. And boy, what a difference that makes. I mean, they really. Part of what team? 
part of our um, 21st Century Community Learning Center team. So in addition to the club-based programs, we also have some school-based programs, and Burke Street is one of them. And um, and Teresa Weller, the ca guidance counselor there, is fantastic. I mean, she really helps to transition the kids from a school program to an after-school learning and recreational environment. I, I echo that. We just love the staff at Burke Street School, and Teresa goes over and beyond. Most of the staff do, and there's almost zero turnover at that school. I mean, these are teachers who have decades of experience. They could teach anywhere. They could go to any state and command much more money, but they choose to stay at Burke Street, and it is such a wonderful um, uh, staff to work with. Uh, I was laughing. We have that, that, that closing program for the kids at the church uh, at the end of May, and it is so great. It is so um, overwhelming to see all the families the grandmothers, grandparents, uh, moms, dads, care caregivers, children in strollers, and they and they send the third graders off, and you, there's not a, a dry eye in the place, including me and, and and Principal Cutlip. They just love those children, but they also are concerned about their academic uh, performance, and so they just do uh, whatever they can they can to support families, and so we just try to walk alongside them to make sure if there's things that they need that we can help pull resources from the community. And certainly, you know, the Martinsburg Initiative is another big part of that, and Margaret Kirsty and her team. And so it, it takes a community to, to see these educational outcomes uh, turn around. You know, they, they, they push reading at Burke Street School. They have read aloud volunteers that have been there for decades. And so um, it, is, it is commendable, you know, how they um, support bringing the community into the school. And it takes a principal who understands the importance of having uh, that community connection as well. It's good to see Cutlip with a tear in his eye. You know, I remember calling his games when he was at Shepherd. He was a pretty <laughs> tough dude. Oh, and he, oh, he is, he never even raises his voice. He's such, those children just adore him and he loves those children. And, um, I hope we never see him. I know that he could probably move on to bigger and better things, but he chooses to stay at Burke Street, which we are so thankful for as well. Matt Harvey. As a former board member of the Boys and Girls Club, I'm going to direct this towards Stacey. You know, I've had the privilege of seeing that not only is this just a place for kids to go and socialize, you're, it's saving lives in a lot of instances, and you've had a lot of success stories, and a lot of people – don't get to see that so could you walk us behind the scenes of, of what happens at the club sure absolutely and charlotte can probably attest to this in her work at burke street children find their person uh, they they don't go to a program because you know they're they're excited about about a toy or a game that the, the club has they really find their person they develop that relationship and Charlotte's example about the young person from the Achievement Academy coming up to her and recognizing her and saying, do you remember me? Um, we get that a lot in, in the clubs. And you know, the cool thing is, yeah, we remember you. We remember watching you from that, you know, that first grader when you were, you know, you're a little on the wild side to, wow, this, this amazing young person who you've grown to become. And, um, and that's, that's really the goal for Boys and Girls Clubs is, you know, taking a young person from childhood into adulthood with a plan for their future, whether that is going to high, you know, seeking higher education pursuits, or um, if they, you know, if they're interested in a trade, we want to encourage them to, you know, follow your dream, fight, help them find their path, and then forge their way through. It's it's a safe place for a lot for children as well. Absolutely, I mean, young people in the, between the hours of three and seven are truly the most um, the most dangerous hours in the after school if a young person doesn't have a place to go or a parent at home. Uh, it left to their own devices, you know, they could they could come into harm's way, and we never want to see a young person in harm. So having a place to come to, uh, like the Boys and Girls Club, really, I think not only does it create a level of safety for a young person, but the people that are around them, it, it really enriches their lives. 
So where is or where are the Boys and Girls Clubs, the facilities? Good that you said that are because we're a tri-county organization. We have our downtown Martinsburg Club, which is at the corner of John and Queen Street at 105 West John. We have a Jefferson County Club, which celebrates its 25th year this year, um, and that's at 334 North Lawrence Street, um, very close to the Ransom Civic Center. And then our our site that um, is in between it's um, celebrating its 20, it'll be our 28th year um, this summer is our Morgan County Club. And that's at, at, our, at our newest location um, at, at um, 161 Burkmore Place up near Reed's Pharmacy. Now, logistically, do school buses take the kids after school to the to the clubs yes primarily that's the transportation mode is they'll they'll ride the school bus to the club in our after school sites they stay on site at the schools for about an hour to an hour and a half and we work on the academic um, enrichment and homework help tutoring we also partner very closely with title one schools where we can push out or pull out the the young people who need additional a little bit more intensive support they'll work with a title one teacher and then come back to us and then from there they'll ride the school bus over to the club where they'll get social emotional learning you know a lot of our kids are are struggling with big emotions and we have to teach them how to manage that um, we give them a space where you know if they're having a challenge with a peer we we have a a leader who can help guide them through that and work it out and then sports and arts are, are very much a part of what we do as well you know shame on me I, I this is a surprise to me the when I think of boys and girls clubs from of course I got a few years on me I think of the athletic part it's a place to go shoot hoops and, and that sort of thing but this whole academic element and emotional support element is is new to me I did I didn't know and you know what? I was talking with someone um, yesterday about how things change over time, and uh, and we really had to work to make those proper changes so that we were making the biggest impact. At the end of the day, we want to show impact, and that can look in you know very many ways. One, you know, if a young person graduates from high school and we're concerned that they might not make it, and we can get them to. Um, you know, if they if they enter in the armed services or the military, that that's a level of success. Or if a young person doesn't really know how to apply for scholarships, but they need that, then we bring in community experts to help guide that process. So is this a K through 12 age it, group? It is six six to 18. We, it is kindergarten in some of our school sites where um, they start at kindergarten. Our guests on the program include Stacy Roan from the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Eastern Panhandle and this year's Stephanie Pearson Champion of Youth Award winner Charlotte Norris, who we plucked out of the audience this morning and uh, made her uh, divert some of her babysitting duties today to uh, uh, get uh, honored here on the program as well. Charlotte, you mentioned your career with the Scouts, the Girl Scouts, uh, before uh, the work you do here in the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, why do you dedicate so much of your life, and have you dedicated so much of your life to working with youth? Well, um, I, I've, someone asked me that question recently, and I have to say that I, I was really blessed. I had uh, wonderful parents. I came from a wonderful community, and was I felt very fortunate. And certainly when I moved to West Virginia, I certainly saw differences in what was... Um, uh, available for for children and families, and so I've always felt like you know I have a responsibility to to pour into whatever community I live in because of all that was poured into me you know growing up. You know, my mom and dad were young parents. You know, by the time you know uh, I came along, there were already three little girls, me and uh, my uh, two sisters, and they they worked hard to provide us with with uh, lots of advantages um, uh, with on a, a very minimal you know uh, income but they but they uh, put three girls through college and um, when I was in junior high my mother went back to school and she graduated from nursing school the same year I graduated from high school and just I just saw their work ethic and what they did to to help us as a family um, to they always wanted the best for us and they certainly provided whatever they could and so I, I'm just really I just feel very fortunate for the for the um, 
family that I grew up in and then my extended family as well. You mentioned your parents, your family, and I've known Bill since 1990, and I remember doing so many remote broadcasts with him as the sales rep, and people were, would come from all corners of, of the uh, the globe while he was out in public and ask him how his mom was doing or how was, you know his dad and talk about how great his mom was and her baking and cooking and, and whatever. And it seemed like Bill knew everybody, and everybody loved Bill's parents uh, as well. Uh, and uh, this is a very... Uh, obvious question, but because of the work you do with youth, and kids don't always have the best home situation, uh, talk to me about the importance of a solid family in community, and in the absence of that, the role that we as adults have in our communities. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's nothing more important than what happens at home. Um, you know, as, as a child, I can remember there were always books, you know, in, in, our, in our home. And that's so important. I saw my parents read. I think my father has the longest-running subscription to U.S. News and World Report, if anybody <laughs> even knows what that is. <laughs> I do. And we got both, at that time, we had an evening and morning paper. I, I would see them, you know, uh, how important, you know, uh, education was to them. But they, but they were a great example. And, again, uh, the work ethic. It, it never occurred to me that you didn't didn't get up and go to work every day because I saw my parents do it. My father was a cabinet maker by trade and uh, a craftsman, and so he worked long hours in, in dusty conditions, And um, but they still had time to be involved in the PTA. My dad was that, was that, um, that parent that, that drove the cheerleaders to cheer camp and to away games. And then even after we all graduated from high school, he still was a booster for the boys' basketball team. And so, you know, they led by example, and I had many more um, examples growing up of, of, of educators and parents and neighbor, neighbors who um, looked after us and made sure that, um, you know, that they were also engaged in the community. And so there's no replacement for that. There's no replacement for having an engaged um, family. But when that isn't there, it's, it's the community has to step up. Um, you know, we have to pour into our schools and, you know, be there. You know, Bill was a past volunteer for 25-plus years until he became a magistrate, you know. So it was something that I admired in him, and we certainly both shared that commitment to uh, the community and to young people. And so um, there's just no, no substitute for an engaged uh, family as well as an engaged community as it comes to our schools. Stacy, again, if you could promote the dinner and how folks get tickets to see Charlotte honored. Absolutely. Honoring Charlotte Norris as the Stephanie Pearson Champion for Youth for 2023. The event's at the Holiday Inn in Martinsburg on May 18th. And you can get tickets by going to our website, www.bgcepwv.net. Or you can call our corporate office at 304-263-1832, and we can help you get a ticket from there. Great stuff. Thank you so much for coming in, Stacy. Thanks for having me. It's been good to good to visit with you again. I'll try not to make it so long in between times. And Charlotte, good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And I, and I hate that I wasn't able to be there with you, uh, Stacy. but I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. To you <laughs> Next month. It's for a good cause. Hey, thanks so much, Charlotte. Thank you. Stacy, grab a cookie on your way out. Thank you. I, I think I need to pass. I think I've been eating too many cookies. <laughs> but You can never have enough cookies. Uh.